Gen X from the McLaren from the McLaren perspective is basically the sum of uh, from n is equal to zero to infinity uh, of minus one uh, to the n times x to the two n plus one all over two n plus one factorial. So if we divide this now here by x, okay. Uh, well, each term here in the summation is effectively going to be divided by x, okay? Uh, so like when we consider this here, this is now the same as, this is the same as the sum of uh, uh, minus 1 to the n of x to the 2n plus 1 all over, well, this is effectively x times 2n plus 1 factorial as when n iterates from 0 through to infinity. Uh, and this basically now gives us the summation okay, from n is equal to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n of, two, of x, x to the power of 2n over 2n plus 1 factorial. So effectively, this function can be represented like this. So now we're ready to go. Okay? Actually, we're probably going to just pair this back now. Uh, so we want to estimate, we want to show uh, that the limit, that the limit of sine x over x as x tends to zero, we want to estimate to see what that is, okay? Well, that's effectively the same as the limit, okay? Uh, as x tends to zero of this particular McLaurin series that represents the function, that represents the function now f of x. So it's the same as the limit as x tends to zero of this particular infinite summation from n is equal to zero to infinity of minus one to the n times x to the two n all over two n plus one factorial. So it's effectively that limit that we have to calculate. And we know what this is. This is the same as the limit, okay, of when we expand this out, don't forget, uh, starting at uh, when n is zero, this is minus one to the zero gives us one. So this is going to be one over, when n is zero, two times zero gives us zero plus one gives us one factorial. So this is effectively going to be uh, minus 1 to the n becomes 1, 2n plus 1 factorial becomes 1 factorial when n is 0, and x to the 0, x to the 2 times 0 is the same as 1, so that effectively becomes that. When n is equal to 1, this becomes minus, and it's going to be 1 over, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 gives us 3 factorial, times x, this times it's times x to the power of 2 times 1, which is x squared, right? Plus, the next one, when the n is equal to 2, uh, this is going to be minus 1 squared, which gives us a positive. So it's going to be 1 over 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 gives us a 5 factorial. Uh, but this times it's x to the power of 2 times 2, which is equal to x to the power of 4. Okay? So you can actually see what's happening now. The next term is going to be minus 1 over, well, 1, 3, 5, 7 factorial, okay? all to the power of x to the power of 6, plus and all the way through. Okay? And it's that expansion as x tends to zero that we're interested in. Well, have a look at this. As x gets closer and closer to zero, okay, this falls off, this falls off, this falls off, because effectively they become zero all the way through, down through this infinite representation. So what we're actually left with is we're left with the limit of one over one factorial, which is limit of a constant, uh, which is equal to one, which is equal to one effectively and therefore what we have therefore what we've shown is that the limit of sine x over x as x tends to zero is in fact equal to one uh, and i think this is actually a nicer a nicer proof uh, of that particular important limit that comes up in a lot of places yeah in relation to in relation to uh, the calculation of limits uh, and so on and so forth okay guys it wasn't really much as you can see there probably wasn't really much much work to do here other than being aware of this particular infinite expansion this is what's known as the taylor series okay uh, and that when a function is infinitely differentiable which is trigonometric functions of this particular type are uh, that what we can uh, do is we can actually represent the trigonometric function as an infinite summation of its derivatives okay that's the taylor series and then when a is equal to zero we actually end up with the mclaurin series okay uh, okay, guys, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats. Uh, this was another video in our series of videos dealing with calculus and, calculus and limits, uh, and then specifically looking at a very, very important limit. And it was a, a second attempt 
Uh, the first one, what we, the first proof uh, was based off a geometric argument, where this was more of a, let's say, more of a probably a purer, a purer, 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 purer argument. But the other one is is, is really nice as well. So once again, guys, uh, I hope that this was intuitive and more importantly, I hope that was helpful. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye bye.